This is Math 142, and we are going to take a peek at Section 7.4. We're going to look at um, some more relationships, sum to product relationships. So we'll start with some relationships that we know, and then we'll combine them to give us some more information. So here's one that we know. Uh, cosine of alpha combined with beta is equal to cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, opposite operator, right? Minus becomes plus, plus becomes minus, and then sine alpha, sine beta. We have this relationship. Let's just add these together and see what we end up with. So over here, I'm just going to end up with this first thing plus that second thing. So, And on this right side, notice I get two of these, and I'm just adding, right? And then this minus itself is zero, so I just end up with two of these. So that's interesting. This is cosine times cosine. That's a product. And then notice that this is now as a sum. This is a sum. Cosine of the first minus the second plus cosine of the first plus the second. So again, interestingly, we can convert from a product cosine times cosine to a sum cosine plus cosine. And we're going to end up with like uh, doing this for cosine times sine, sine times sine, and so on. And so um, this is this. I'll, I'll get it written over here in a second. And just, just to think about how else we could do this, what if instead of adding these, we, we subtracted what we end up with? So here we go. Again, this side, just that minus that. And since we're subtracting, this minus itself is a zero. That cancels out. And that negative gets distributed, right? So it goes to everything. So that's a positive. So now we have two of these. So now we have a product, sine times sine, giving us something about cosine minus sine. And there's one extra step I didn't do on the last one, and it'll show up in these formulas, is you could divide both sides by 2. And notice if I do that, um, on this side, if I divide this by 2, it just goes. But on this side, if I divide this by 2, it becomes half of that whole thing. So here are a couple of uh, relationships, cos uh, product to sum relationships. And what I want you to notice, if I did the same thing with the sine of uh, alpha minus beta and the sine of alpha plus beta combined in the same way, I get some other ones as well. So we've got these sum product relationships, and there are uh, four of them right here that we're just going to use, product to sum. So cosine uh, times cosine, we can simplify to one half of this, right? Sine times sine, one half of that. So how do we actually go about using that? So let's practice using these to, to rewrite some stuff. So here we have a product, sine of something of 5 theta times cosine of 2 theta. So sine times cosine. So I'm just going to look over here. Sine times cosine. I notice that that's equal to 1 half of sine of them added together plus sine of them subtracted from each other. So if I go to rewrite this, I would say this is 1 half times sine of their sum. So add them together. Again, I'm just looking back to here, sine times cosine plus sine of them subtracted. 5 theta minus 2 theta is 3 theta. And there it is rewritten as a sum. This product has now been written as a sum. All right, let's go ahead and do this one. So it's cosine times cosine. That's my product, and I want to rewrite it as a sum. So I'm going to look over here, cosine times cosine. Well, it's 1 half. Cosine the first one minus the second one plus cosine the first one plus the second one. Okay. First one minus the second one. So 2x minus 7x. So notice this is going to be a negative 5x plus them added together. And there's one more thing we can do. Think about those even odds. Remember cosine of a negative. That's like there's the negative angle. There's the positive angle. It's the same as just cosine and the positive angle. They both have the same, same width. So I can rewrite this as just positive 5x. And there that one is uh, written as a sum. So really for these, we're practicing, if it's given to me in this form, recognizing the form and rewriting it in that form using these relationships, using these formulas. And remember, these formulas came out of those some difference formulas that we, already, that we already know. Now, how about going the opposite direction? Or how do we write it as a product? So I should be given some sort of sum or maybe a difference. 
Now, I'm going to think about this, um, how I could kind of piece it together and rationalize it. I'm going to also show you some formulas that you can just use. But um, I, I like being able to kind of figure it out. So I have sine of something minus sine of something. So sine minus sine happens here. Now notice that this is like one half. I don't have a one half out here. So what I could do is multiply both sides of this by two, right? So just sine plus uh, sine minus sine is the same as two of cosine of something times sine of something. Now what I have to do is figure out what the, those alpha and beta are going to be. But I know my answer is going to be like two cosine of something times sine of something. Not necessarily the same something. But I do know that this thing that's called alpha should be um, in here alpha plus beta and in here alpha minus beta. Let me, let me think about what this means. So this six theta are, is, are those two things added together. So I know that alpha plus beta is six theta. And since it's minus sine alpha minus beta, that's equal to two theta. Now again, I'm going to give you some formulas you could just use straight up, but I really like the, the idea of, of thinking about this as well. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So now, since I have this system, if I added these two equations together, alpha plus alpha is 2 alpha. Uh, beta minus beta is 0. Betas drop out. 6 theta plus 2 theta is 8 theta. Oh, interesting. Divide both sides by 2. Alpha is 4 theta. So this has to be a 4 theta in here. And then beta, well, if I plug that 4 theta back in, 4 theta plus something is 6 theta. That must be a 2. So see how I could kind of set up a little system and do it this way. There are also, like I said, uh, some formulas that we can, we can take a peek at. And they're right here. So the other thing I could do is I could just go the other way. Like they're giving me the alpha and the beta in the subtraction now instead of in the product. Right here it's the product. They're saying here's your alpha beta. Right? It is the sum this way. On these ones, on these sum to product ones, it's giving you something a little different. It's saying here's the sum. Here's how you could write the product. Right? Two times sine something times cosine something. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, do that problem that I just did, I've got sine minus sine. So here it is right here, sine minus sine. So it's going to be 2 times sine of something. And that something is them subtracted divided by 2. Multiplied by cosine of them added together divided by 2. Sine... That's a 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's 8 of them. 8 of them divided by 4. Uh, 2 is 4. I notice it's the same answer uh, that we had. It's written in a little bit different order, right? Cosine's first here and sine second, but it's multiplied together. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Same answer. So you can just, uh, you can use these formulas if you weren't uh, too into figuring it out one piece at a time. Now, sometimes you can use this information to get the exact value of, uh, of something. Now, we're using some difference formulas for things like, what's the cosine of 15 degrees exactly? Or what's the cosine of 75 degrees exactly? So you could break these both up using some difference formulas and then subtract the answers. But what's nice about this is notice I have cosine minus cosine. Cosine minus cosine, that's this. So I'm going to use this, this formula right here to do some substitution. So this would be the same as negative 2 times sine of them added together divided by 2 multiplied by sine of them subtracted divided by 2. And so let's think about this. Negative 2 sine. These added together is 90. So 90 over 2 is 45. Um, oh, and this should have been subtraction here. Sorry about that. Yep, should have been subtraction. 15 minus 75. Negative 60. And so now what I can do is I can just look this up. Uh, either I know these values, 
because I've dealt with them a bunch, or I could look them up on my on my unit circle. So we are talking about a uh, sine of 45. Well, that's root 2 over 2. So this is root 2 over 2. Sine of negative 30, you might know it, or maybe you don't. Uh, negative 30 is here, which is, um, what are we doing? Sine, negative 1 half. And notice I'm multiplying all these together. Uh, negative times a negative is positive. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I get uh, root 2 over 2. And I'm there. So this idea of peaking at the unit circle, it's a good idea um, to pull it up. And it's actually a good time for me to point out to you that I have a sheet that you can, um, you'll be able to use on the exam and refer back to. So let me pull that up. So it's going to be here in resources, and it'll show up here. It's called the Scoundrels page. And you can use this on exam two and on the final. And if you look, here's all of these, a uh, bunch of these relationships that we were just talking about. We've talked about half angle. We've talked about double angle, sum and difference formulas, Pythagorean identities, and a unit circle. So all sorts of good references for you to use. I would suggest you print this out and have it next to you while you're, uh, while you're doing, doing the work. All right. Hey, give these problems in the set a try. Message me with questions or post questions in the forum.